so welcome you both venkat and vishal okay before proceeding for the class i just wanted to know regarding your uh, you know uh, little bit introduction yeah, sure hi uh, sir uh, what is your name vishal uh, sorry uh, yes so my name is radhe verma okay and i, I would be your instructor and to end for this dns course okay so yeah hi my name is uh, venkat uh, bolapalli and i am working as a network uh, security engineer in ntt so as per my job requirement i i am i joined this course to learn uh, this one so dns actually this is dns course i think i don't know so yes, i am new fid yes yeah so i am new to f5 this one but i have brief idea on ltms so i thought better to learn gtm as well so yeah okay and you are india based or out of india i am in melbourne in australia in australia yeah. okay so sure. thank you vanket yeah no for your introduction vishal maybe you can also introduce yourself yeah i am vishal from uh... from pune i am working as a network security as well means specifically i work on routing switching uh, load balancer and all those things so i am very much means well versed with the uh, ltm okay because i have implemented it quite many number of uh, ltm physical appliances for different location because my job is implementation engineer so i do work on palo alto juniper srx and nx480 and all those devices whatever the part comes for the implementation be it router switch or any device i have to implement it but i don't know many things about the gtm so i am more inclined because the uh, gtm part is handled by my counterpart in the uh, us okay so i am very much inclined to learn this technology and so that i can work on those products so i'm based out of pune okay perfect perfect thank you vishal for your introduction yeah okay so from both of you i came to know that you have some experience on f5 ltm you are aware but gtm you are more more keen to understand i hope that is correct right so so let me just give me a minute before that i have one query are we go, going to cover uh, the par each and every conference or topic uh, which is mentioned on fi site for this gtm blueprint for the, okay what you can do you just go to our website netminion.net okay from there you go to the courses under courses you can see f5 gtm okay when you scroll this page on the down bottom of this page you can download the syllabus okay and okay. we will going to cover all of those topics okay let okay. me show you quickly if you are very new to it so if you will go to the netminion.net go to the courses under courses uh, for uh, like for this batch we are here for figtm so go to the figtm page scroll it down and there is download complete syllabus okay you click on this button and it will be get downloaded for you okay okay Sir, so one more question. Uh, are we are going to get these uh, recordings of our class, right? So, uh, let me just clear on that part also. As okay. a part of the this cur curriculum, you guys will get first thing live training, okay? And I would be your instructor. Second thing, you will get all the videos recording in our platform. okay you will get access of that after you are maybe all joining you know formalities is completed third you will get lab access okay for the lab access i will be gonna come later on because in first few classes lab is not required first two classes okay in next weekend i would be gonna talk about lab part later on but for time being i am just telling you what all things you will receive from us okay okay and 
and all of these things will be uh, you know uh, like you will be having access on these parts once you have all the joining formalities done probably zoya can take that uh, uh, you know, with you guys so probably you can just talk with her for the joining formalities thing sure any other question no sir you can proceed so sorry for interruption no no it's actually uh, valid one sorry one more uh, query like go ahead so uh, course coordinator shared one pdf file is it same is it same as the one in website i'm sorry so joy has shared the syllabus uh, in pdf format in uh -huh, that is that is from the website only. so same thing right same thing same as in website same thing same. actually okay. you just you just go to the website only because if there is some change probably okay you will see that change in the website yeah that's fine okay i will have a look okay thanks sure sure okay any other question from both of you yes. no not it all good yes yeah. okay <clears throat> so we are today here for f5 gt okay anybody would like to talk about what is fi gtm whatever knowledge you have probably that would be fine for me so just based on some basic study so for example the uh, servers are located across uh, geography and if the traffic need to be diverted to different for example google.com amazon.com so so this gtm dns has that configuration to route the traffic to respective uh, servers across the globe wherever they are located global traffic management correct correct venkat we shall yes sir because if you have two different data centers say for example one is on east coast and one is on west coast okay and you want to resolve that same url okay achieving the geographic redundancy with the help of fi also you can have the dns uh, dns is not a uh, means uh, based uh, working on round robin basis we can make a dns intelligent as well as we can configure different parameters where we can make this uh, little we can reduce the latency and all those things with the help of gtm true that is what that is what my understanding is true i can see bal krishna is there mih is there can you guys please tell like what is fi gtm what do you think that what the fi gtm does mih or bal krishna no okay <clears throat> fair enough so first of all i hope you people are aware if not even that is also fine fi gtm stands for global traffic manager new name is dns this was the old name okay this name in day to day conversation we are using it but currently the new name is dns okay fi dns it is named as so this is a product offered by a company named as fi networks so fi networks is a company or an organization which is known for its expertise in application delivery or you can say in security solutions also so gtm what we are discussing here is one of the part of that fi portfolio for the solution which is designed for optimizing or maybe securing the application delivery because it deals in that part okay its its services is there like for the complex net network uh, environments how to optimize your application delivery that is the work for fi networks and we are checking one of the part that is fi gtm global traffic manager and new name is <laughs> new name is anybody dns dns right then if i will talk about 
a very brief overview about GTM. GTM primary function, what you people were saying, your understanding is very much correct. That primary function has a name, okay? And that name is GSLB. Have you heard this name? Yes, sir. Yeah, some server load balancing, I think so. Right, right. So it is global server load balancing. How it is differs from the simple load balancing that we will be going to cover later on whenever our class will be, you know, ongoing for some of the sessions. But currently I'm just giving you an overview. So GSLB means distributing incoming traffic, which traffic? The DNS traffic, okay? Incoming traffic to the multiple of the servers, which can be reside in different, different data center and ensure that there is optimal performance. There is the availability. There is the scalability. There should not be any, uh, any kind of such issues available. Okay. So that is GSLB. Second main function for GSLB is high availability. Okay. Uh, probably I will come to this part later on because otherwise I need to talk about some more stuff here. Let's let's proceed. Okay, let's proceed for the discussion. This is a generic discussion today. I just wanted to know my audience having you know uh, like what kind of background from where I should start, which pace should I pick. So that is the reason like we are you know, just discussing about very fundamental topic. So. Let's forget about FI GTM. If I will ask, what is DNS? Okay, simple DNS. Can anybody let me know? So resolution of uh, URL to IP address. Simple. Okay. It's map and host name to the IP address. Like if we have xyz.com. Okay. It can be mapped with some of the IP, let us say one, two, three, four. So we can say DNS is nothing, but it is a bit like a phone book on your internet, where instead of phone number, you can check the name. Why names? Names are easy to learn. So Amazon.com, Facebook.com, Flipkart.com, or ICICI Bank, or maybe whatever. Okay. You are aware and you are able to recall these names instead of their IP addresses. So in past, we just found a way that we should have some DNS. Okay. I would be going to talk about in past what happened, but uh, for now, one thing I would like to talk about that DNS is a distributed database. Okay, we find out that it is a database, but I am saying it is a distributed database. Can anybody let me know what does this term means? Distributed database. Distributed means when you are distributing it. So it's a structured database. We can say that's the uh, root 13 means different servers are there. Means mm -hmm. here top, uh, top level domain and all those things. Perfect. So we can say DNS is not managed by a single or centralized server. Okay. Instead, it operates as a distributed and hierarchical network of the servers that work together to resolve your domain names to the IP address. Because ultimately, what it is doing? It is resolving the name okay, to the IP addresses. So this distributed structure helps to ensure the, again, stability, resiliency, and the scalability of the DNS system. Because if it would be a single uh, organization who is man managing it, it may be overloaded with all of the requests on a single server and it, it won't be so much efficient for the routing or redundancy purpose also. Okay. Okay. So one thing more I would like to ask here, what about this? There is a name xyz.com. There is a name abc.com. Can these two names associated with a single IP? Yes or no? No. Vishal is saying no. Venkat? 
Mm, not sure. Yes. Sorry, who said yes? Balakrishan, you said yes? Yes, sir. Okay. So, answer is yes, it can be. In which situation we want this, such a scenario? Anybody? Redirection of site or something? Uh, one is the redirection, yes. Let us wild say, wild, wild let, cut us, cut. let us say Facebook new name is Meta, but people are still going to the Facebook.com. We want the Facebook.com and the Meta, let us say there is another website, okay? And Meta both to be going on the same server. So we can do like that. Okay, redirection, this is, we can do that. Or maybe I don't want to jump on the C names currently. Let, let me proceed. I would be coming to this. So this point is DNS can allow multiple addresses to be associated with a given name. That is best possible solution and it can exist for the now just this is the statement what you can you people can learn i would be coming further on this point later on in our class okay so i just asked what is dns then if i asked why the dns i hope you people are already aware that remembering name is better than the number okay we don't want to remember the name but as I was talking that in past, when this solution was developed, there was something named as host file, which come into the picture for the DNS solution. Anybody aware about it? Host files? Yeah, I remember uh, briefly. So Windows machine has some uh, host file. Um, the Windows machine itself will resolve that host file. If we will go in our C and then in our Windows, because generally Windows is into the C only. And if you go to the system, okay, system 32 and into the drivers, there you will file, sorry, in the at ETC, there you will find the host file. And in this host file, you can do a lot of modification for your DNS thing. So let us say you want to do some kind of local testing or you are developing some of the website or you want to block the access on the certain website. Let us say your uh, child is going to one website and you wanted to block that. Okay, how you will do that? There are a lot of options, but with respect to the DNS, I am saying you can just put that host name and give it 127.0.0.1 or whatever fake IP so that the regulation will not go anywhere and it will say that sorry this site is not uh, able to I am not able to open this resource okay so using the host file also you can map a domain to a local IP address which can direct by your computer to a specific server maybe for the testing purpose as I told you okay without affecting your public DNS record. So this host file is not uh, like, it is not uh, making any intervention in your public records. But earlier this solution was good because there was very handful websites, right? But with the rapid growth of internet, this solution wasn't feasible and scalable. Because it is, it is a simple text file which is found on your computer or on your device, which is containing a lot of mappings. So this file is used by your operating system to perform the local DNS regulation, okay, to allow specific domains to be get resolved, but it's not a scalable thing. So later on, we find some of the good solution, which came as a DNS, okay? Any doubt in this? <clears throat> Let me show you, okay? See, if I will open this, see Windows, System32, drivers, etc. Can you see this first thing? Let me double click. So maybe open with notepad. See, this is my local system. It is even showing you. 
that okay whatever you wanted to do you can do like that this is something called your forward like from ip to name or name to ip probably we will be going to come to that part later on but here you can put whatever ip address or whatever host you wanted to mention okay sure no doubts let's proceed further now let me talk about something named as zones. Anybody is aware what is the zone? Security prospecting perspective, I know, but uh, the DNS zone. No, no, no. With respect, I need to understand. I need to understand that DNS. It's all right. Whatever information you have, if somebody is aware what is the DNS zone, you can tell me. I just know that there is a forward zone and reverse zone is there. Mm -hmm. Reverse zone is not generally allowed for the security reasons. Mm -hmm. Forward uh, DNS means lookup is allowed over there. Okay. And so we can do from uh, any uh, URL to the IP NS lookup, mm -hmm. but uh, we cannot do the NS lookup to means, means IP to uh, host name. That is mm -hmm. what I've seen for different clients. So that mm -hmm. is my query also. Why why it is blocked and how it is. Okay. So it depends upon organization to organization. There is no such security risk associated, one thing. Okay. But let us say if your uh, organization is very much concerned about that, if somebody is using 10.1.1.1 and let's look up, let us say. Okay. Because within your organization, there would be private IP. So if somebody is doing NS lookup and it is coming as I am just saying INET router. Maybe it is providing the location APAC DC01 dot blah, 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 blah. Okay. Somebody can check that this IP is associated with what, with what specific device. And they can do some kind of, you know, different, different attacks. So it can be one of the reason that your organization is blocking it, but in maximum organizations, this is not blocked. Okay. This is not a standard practice to get blocked. Because within your organization, these are your, uh, what to say? These are the trusted people, I will say, right? Because within organization, who can use? The one who is the employee of your own company and you need to trust them. So generally we don't know that. Okay. Let's come back to the zones. If I will say zone, zone is something which contains the information about the domain name. Okay. Some. So some terms are like which are intervened with each other like domain name I am using here. So you adjust that domain name. For now, you just understand domain name means like xyz.com, abc.com, fi.com, cisco.com. These all are the domains. Okay. What I am saying, zone contain the information. It is containing the information. About what? About the domain name. And in the domain name, there would be something named as resource records, which again, I will be covering. Resource records. I will be covering in a moment, but for now, you just focus on the zones. Zone is something which contain the information about the domain name and its all resource reports. Or you can say it is a bit like a portion of your DNS hierarchy. Why zones are required? Zones are required because of your efficient management. Okay, to make your DNS system very scalable and flexible. So let me make a diagram so that every one of you can understand about the domain 
about the resource record and about the zones. And later on, I would be explaining about it more also. But first, let me make a diagram. Let us say this is your data sector. Okay, this data center, NetMinion data center is there. Now, NetMinion has some of the website. Let us say for videos, there is one website. For blog, there is one website. For jobs, there is one website. Generally, there is one website, okay, where client traffic will land. For the same, I should be having one DNS server. Who is managing it? Okay. I am having a DNS in DNS server. I will purchase a domain for net because my organization name is NetMinion. What I am deciding, I am purchasing a domain with NetMinion. Let us say in my case, it is NetMinion.net. Okay, so this is called as a domain. One thing. So person who is from the net minion who is building up this application they purchase a domain named as netminion.net one thing second thing now because they wanted to build up a database there are different different websites they are just saying in their dns there is the video thing which has this ip there is blog thing which has this ip there is job thing which has this ip and blah 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 there can be n number of entries these n number of entries is named as resource records these are resource records resource records can of different different type that i will be gonna cover don't worry but for now you should be have a broader picture that what i am talking about secondly where you are saving this this file maybe you can say is a zone zone is also of different type but again you should be having an overview for the same so i talked about the overview of three things here one is domain second is resource record third is zone please speak up if you have any doubt in this overview only so if so, uh, hi uh, so if i have domain registrar access and i see some zone records uh, resource records is it is it the same thing uh, which same i see thing, same thing. yes okay so so uh, what is the uh, real time example for zone uh, so you mentioned some file names Block you files. for the now for for as an overview you just understand it is a file where you are saving all the entries and these entries are resource records. Okay. I would be explaining more on this, but for the time being, there should be a picture in your mind. Otherwise, you will be, you know, not able to understand these concepts. So for now, there should be a picture in your mind. Like if I will talk about John, what I am actually talking about, you should be aware. When I am talking about resource record, you should be aware what I am talking about. If I am saying domain, what is the domain you should aware okay the overview so just as an overview is these three points clear to everybody bal krishan vishal banket so again resource records means what are those domain name records are resource records is it uh it can be domains resource it can be subdomain it can be you know uh like this your domain extensions also or maybe different pages in your domain you can say okay some urls whatever some urls right okay okay got it so we shall clear sir clear the mx mx record a record all those records uh, that you that are going I to would, i would be going to cover that yeah i would be going to cover but for now this part is clear these three yes, components sir. are clear yes sir. okay bal krishan any doubt no sir fine let me proceed now i was touching the first part which is zone let me come back to the jokes
aqui. Ok. So when I'm saying John, as I was telling you earlier, John is something which contain the information, okay, information about a domain. And when I'm saying information, infor information is something like resource records. Okay. The same thing with which I talked about uh, in before some time. So there can be n number of zones. Let me talk about the very first zone, primary, or it is also known, named as master zone. Anybody is aware about this master zone or primary zone, or you wanted to speak something, please speak. Otherwise, I will be going to explain. Okay. There is a term named as authoritative. I will be, uh, you know, coming to this part again uh, when it is required. But for now, I am just introducing this word also. Authority. It means, let us say, this is my DNS. This is my data centers. In my data center, there are thousands of the servers or application, I will say. And here I have a DNS. But I don't want to show this DNS in the public. I am purchasing an another service from the public internet. Okay, we can have different different DNS solution. Again, I would be coming to that part also in a moment. But for now, you just understand this concept. And whenever a client is coming for DNS query, this is resolving that part. Since this number two DNS is not the one who is actually managing all of your domains. So this is named as non-authoritative. But if some query is coming over here on the exact DNS server who is maintaining all the domains, these queries will be authoritative. Okay, let me give some example. Probably that will make some more you know, clarity to you people. And let's look up for facebook.com see this query is what kind of query please speak up guys be interactive another attitude no another attitude right yes similarly similarly if i will check for google okay here also you will find one authority why they are not exposing their own data center dns server to the public okay there is some another server who is handling their request how probably we will be coming to that even if i also work as known authoritative dns server in some cases or generally it is a best practice to make it as known authoritative but i would be coming to that part later on not now okay so for the for the server number one the zone will be primary zone or named as master zone. So master zone is a zone which is a authoritative and they respond to the DNS query for their own domain. And when there is master domain, there is one resource record which is very important, SOA. This entry should be there. Why it should be there? Why it should not be there? What this SOA means? I will be coming to that. Don't worry. When in in, in next uh, maybe topic, I am talking about the resource record. Don't worry. I would be explaining you about the same. But for now, primary zone is clear to everybody. If there is any doubt, please ask. Thank you. I don't need to understand. So, so other TV is basically suppose I have, I have my servers and data center. So where my DNS server is located, that is other TV. Huh. So internal. maybe you can say you have your internal DNS server. Okay. Yeah, for example, that is the DNS server. So, for example, my Windows server is uh, configured as a DNS server in my network. So uh, that would be authoritative. In authoritative, 
if you will do the ns lookup this part will not come okay it will okay. it will simply show you the regulation and uh, you know the name and the address which means it is an authoritative one sir okay okay so we can say that enterprise is maintaining its own uh, particular enterprise is maintaining its own dns the local but, dns but obvious but obvious every enterprise will have their own local dns so that is authoritative that is authoritative yes okay that part is clear yes primary zone is clear to everybody primary zone is for the authoritative server you have the primary zone okay so primary zone resides on other tier to server only on the authoritative server yes okay yeah clear and as i told you it has a record which is very important why it is important okay probably when i would be teaching you dns express transfer the zone you will understand about the significance of this soa record later on. but let's do step by step progress okay let's not jump so just these two things i described here one is the authoritative second is the primary and third is r in the resource record there is so entry okay uh, sir one one thing uh, so authority and primary we can say that synonym to each other means uh, are this term replace, uh, replaceable so primary or master zone as the zones okay. are the interchangeable authoritative is something i am saying that it either it is authoritative or not okay. it's a it's a separate term probably you can say okay sorry balkrishan any doubt no sir oh let's jump to the second second is our secondary So one is the primary or master, second is secondary or slave, master slave relations. So as I told you that there is a DNS server in your organization, okay, this is first server, which is maintaining all the entries and it is authoritative. I don't want to expose this probably for the security reason or maybe different, different reason. I am having some another DNS, DNS2, okay, where what I am doing, I am importing all of these entries or this zone file in my DNS. So when I am doing such a things, when zone files for the secondary zones are copied from the principal zone file, this is a non authoritative DNS server and it is maintaining the secondary zone. Although the entries are same, please be noted okay but it is not managing that it cannot modify that if any modification is required who can do that the authoritative dns server or the primary zone can do that but it will be get updated it is a replica or it is a copy of the principal zone file so secondary zone respond authoritatively for the zone provided by the dns server one is this fine very simple point. Venkat, Vishal, Bal. Yeah. yeah, this is fine. Thanks. Sir, in this case, we have to create two DNS server. One authoritative and second one is non authoritative. Do not get confused for the time being. I will be going to talk about design. In the designing part, you will understand each of these concepts very minutely. But for the time being, I am just providing you the overview. Okay. okay so for now do not make any picture that we need to create two dns three dns four dns no don't think about that okay it can uh, uh, you know make a uh, some wrong perceptions in your mind so for timing just i am saying if there are two servers okay then it is the case but in which scenario it should be in which scenario it should not be that I, I will be going to discuss in the design part. Okay, any doubt? No, sir. Okay. 
सम जोन्स आर नेम एज स्टब जोन्स विच कंटेनिंग ओनली द एंट्री ऑफ एन एस रिकॉर्ड अगेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट वन मोर टर्म हेयर विच इज एन एस रिकॉर्ड इट इज अस रिकॉर्ड टाइप विच डिस्क्राइब वेर इज माई डी एन एस can we say it is one of the type of resource record as record is yes it is a resource record as i told you it is a resource record okay one of the type of resource record which described about what is my dns server in f5 gtm later on you will understand there is a concept of listener okay in our in our uh, resource this uh, this resource record entry ns record we point out it towards the listener i am uh, i should not use this term because you people are already working so i am just giving an overview if you can relate if you don't able to relate just forget about it i will be going to talk when we start figtm because before figtm we have lot of things i will teach you how to create the dns server on the linux in our lab okay you will also create that by your own on the lab provided to you okay so you you can do your hands dirty as in how you want to make some domains you will create some zones you will create the resource records everything you will be going to create don't worry but for now just make the understanding of these concepts first is this part clear to everybody yes yes okay let me delete this now the two things what you were describing vishal let me just uh, you know cover that also here one is forward zone lookup second is reverse zone lookup there are two terms forward zone and reverse zone forward zone means very simple abc.com to ip address reverse zone means simply from ip to yeah. so this thing also we will be going to create on our linux machine okay forward zone reverse zone both of the zones we will be going to create and we will be doing all of the stuffs for different different domains probably you can create uh, you know your own domain like vanket.com vishal.com balkrishan.com whatever domain you wanted to make you make there you just uh, give some of the pages or some of the urls there and you can try to resolve that okay let me show you the lab if you people haven't seen yet give me a minute let me just log in to the lab the lab topology what you will receive okay how to access it okay what we need to do probably all those questions keep it with you i will be going to cover all of the things later on okay not now so just a moment i am checking your dns i hope you can see my screen yes yes okay so this is the lab topology what you people will receive okay and like from the scratch either it is routing part either it is netting part either it is acl part i will be giving you the workbook don't worry okay for the initials uh, you are all of this configuration or device to be boot up but can you see there is a gtm here there is a gtm here in different different data centers which will be explaining about gslb later on and this linux machine will work as an application server and in our initial class we will convert them as a dns server okay so any of the linux machine you can uh, you know create them as the local dns server you can see here these are local dns servers so it can be your primary server it can be your secondary server or master or slave or lot of topologies we would be going to doing 
all these blocks. Okay. So Jones, clear to everybody? Yes. yes. Perfect. Let me talk about something, the next topic named as uh, resource, resource, records. So we will be gonna cover resource record now. Before that, let me just explain you people, like how our class will be, you know, uh, held. It will be start at 10, 5 a.m. IST, okay? Five minutes, I am just giving as a buffer time so that if you people are not able to join or you have some other assignments because it's a morning time, you have five minutes buffer time. After that, at 11, we will be having 10 minutes break. So if you have any of the things for the sutta break or whatever, you can just utilize this 10 minutes time there. Okay. Exactly at, at 10, 11, 10, we will start again and approximately at 12. Okay. We will be get concluded this class. So that is how we would be running these uh, like batches. Every batch actually we run like that way. So I hope you people are okay with it, right? So if you have any of the domestic chore or whatever, you can just get it accomplished in 10 minutes and you, you can stretch your body because two hours in two hours, probably sometimes it's really difficult to sit on the chair, okay? So we were discussing about resource records. Anybody, what is a resource record? So information about the domains, different types of records, as you, as you explained two minutes before. Correct, correct, correct. <clears throat> So, uh, there can be different, different type of resource records, okay? Resource record picture is clear to you. This is a unit of information entry in zone files, you can say. Resource records are the basic building block of your host name and IP information that are used to dissolve your, uh, sorry, not dissolve, resolve your all DNS queries, okay? So, there can be different, different type of resource records. Like, let me start with the one which I took the name before some time, that is SOA. Anybody, what is SOA? Heard this term, but not sure. Before some time I was explaining, you know, that in primary zone there should be SOA. It is named as start of authority. As start of authority. It is very important for your master zone file. If you remember, I was telling you, right? So the start of authority resource record or SOA, it means it start every zone file. Okay. And it indicate about what is the name servers. It indicate about something named as uh, serial number. Okay, serial number will get, uh, let us say there is a serial number field. Its value is, I am taking any random value, 1027. Now, in this zone, there is a zone. Okay. In this zone, I added one more resource record. Let us say I added one name for different, different offers which are coming nowadays for my domain. This serial number will keep on updating. It will be 1028. One more resource record I just uh, put over here. Let us say this time I have different jobs which are coming. I am just putting like that. This resource record, uh, which is SOA, its serial number will be 1028. So it means your serial number is something which is describing that there is a change. And from this change, when you have secondary zone, it will request for the again copy, the updated copy of your zone file. Are you getting my point? 
Yes. So this SOA record will create it automatically when you are creating your zone at the very first time. Let me proceed further. You will, it will make sense when we will do practical. Don't worry. Very basic A record. A stands for address. A record means name to IP. Specifically, IP version 4. For IP version 6, there is a record which is named as query. For this again, it will be named to IP, but version 6. These two are also clear, very basic. Yes, sir. Then C name. Heard about it, C name? Canonical name. Right. These are your ca canonical, canonical names. What they does? These are bit like your analysis. Yes. Okay. Let us say if there is a person name as Vikas. In home, we, we used to tell Vicky. Okay, if there is a person named as Samdeep, we used to say SM. So these are what? These are the LICs. So these LICs are named as C name. So if you have an application which is very big, I am just giving an example of Facebook.com. We just can open that FB.com. Such redirections can also be possible. It depends like how company to company they are doing such a thing. But you can create some LICs also named as C names. These LICs works on your standard DNS and on your GTM also. Later on, I would be going to define how to do these things in GT. You can have mail server uh, for the mail exchanger you can have mx record which defines what would be your mail server you can have pointer <coughs> ptr record these records are for your reverse name lookup remember i was saying you forward lookup zone and the reverse lookup zone so for reverse lookup zones you create ptr pointer records which is from IP2. So the resource record type would be PTR. Then I talked about NS. NS stands for name server. Name server resource record define what? What are the name servers for the given domain? It means Talk about the what is the actual DNS. Why it is required? I will be just explaining in a moment. Okay. In our next topic, probably you will understand about the significance of this name server records. But you can have different, different type of records, including text record, which is a bit like your description. Okay. It is a bit like your text file. If you wanted to give some of the information like this DNS record is maintained by whom, who, who would be the support team, DL, what would be their phone number, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> In DNS security, there would be something named as DNS key type of record that again, some advanced record we will be going to talk about later on. RRSIG also is the part of that resource record signature. But again, those DNS resource record, we will be going to talk about later on. And there can be n number of different records. But believe me, we need not to deal with everything. Like if you have iPhone, there are n number of features. But how many features you use? Similarly, goes with here. Okay, there can be n number of resource records. 
but whatever i describe before some time those are enough to us any doubt to anybody in resource recall those no, venkat balkrishan no sir all good no sir good <clears throat> now let me talk about we have discussed basic things okay one thing more we can discuss here the dns hierarchy let's talk about the dns hierarchy here. okay so vishal you were saying about the root server and top level second level something probably you explain me now if there are 13 root servers are there which are uh, so, which are across the globe span uh, and globe we can say and uh, hierarchy is there to maintain means uh, uh, we can say the for the sanity and uh, ease of administration and everything and to reduce the latency also for Just like .dot com .dot edu .dot org things are divided. So the based on that, those particular queries are redirected that particular uh, root server, and it is resolved over. Okay, sure. Thank it. So here is uh, like top level domain .dot next .dot com next .dot org. So I think something like that. So for example. If I try to access one server, first it will check in the top level domain, next level, next level. So it will keep on. So yeah, that's my understanding. Okay, Balkrishan. Anything about the root server or something, or maybe, yeah. No sir, we need to no idea about it. It's all right. Eighty. Okay, let me. Yes. You you wanted to say something, Eighty? Ah, uh, no sir, actually I got late, so I didn't get the proper. It's all right. Let me explain. Let me. Yeah, sure. So, we shall. You are right. Partially, okay. What you were saying. So let me tell you something to you people, which again uh, I would be going to explain in our next topic. But let us discuss about the root servers here. Root servers. there is a term named as root servers and before understanding this term i wanted to explain about our hierarchy let us say we have an application let's take the example of www netminion .net after any name there is a dot present which is the hidden dot we don't see able to see that but there is a dot present okay and dns name whenever you resolve it resolve like this okay if you forget about this protocol thing let it be taken as the fully qualified domain name only fqdn is bit like this very firstly your this name will have this dot and this dot is nothing but is the representing to the root server post that you are having net this net is nothing but is your tld named as top level domain then your net minion is coming into the picture which is your domain and some dns should be there who is resolving it and www means it is your primary thing 
but there can be n number of different hierarchy also possible which i would be going to cover in some moment but before that let me talk about root server okay now root servers as you were mentioning vishal 13 in different different uh documentation we can able to see that it is writing it is uh, mentioned that from a to m which is 13 root servers are there but let me tell you there are more than 13 now but in day to day life in communication we used to say this is 13 only from letter a to m only okay, okay. these a to m like root server a root server b root server c till root server m each responsible for operating and maintaining one or more of these servers so there are like when we are saying root server a in the background again there would be load balancing so this is root server a which means it is bit like your virtual ip of your ltm and in the background there can be a number of servers this is all containing as root server a and there can be till root server m b c d e f g h like that so these are not handed over by a single uh, organization there are different different organization who are managing this and root servers are essential because they provide information about your top level domain if you see this example very firstly the name regulation will start from the root server from root server it will go to the dot net which is top level domain so root server never give you the exact ip address understand it properly it will point you towards the top level domain which can be dot com dot net dot edu dot ca dot in dot fa whatever that we will be going to explain in some time but for now just try to understand the hierarchical concept how dns work <clears throat> so root servers are very essential because they provide the information about top level domain helping to initiate the process of resolving domains name to the ip address but do not resolve the actual ip address i am repeating it second times okay so root server never give you the ip address but it points towards the top level domain and it's important to note that these different different organization which are handling uh, these root servers ensure the global distribution of the root servers and their continuous operations on the sake of the redundancy on the sake of re uh, reliability or the security that your server should not be unavailable at one part of time these things are distributed if you wanted to know more about it probably i can explain but that is not our core area let me maybe just give you an example there is a company named as very sign this is maintaining two root servers root server a and root server j similarly there is a, a university in the southern california isi who handle the root server d blah 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 there is a whole list which we can see over the internet okay but this is a main overview how your root servers are organized any questions from anybody venkat vishal balkrishan or ati okay clear yes so for example sir i have one question so for example i need to access some dot net or dot com tld so so all the root servers will have that uh, information dot net every root server has all the information available that is true okay so so wherever i visit uh, any root server the tld is available so that is replica of all uh, replica yes yes okay so sir so, so, okay. sorry to interrupt uh, but uh, i thought that particular root server who is having the information about dotnet is pointed to that particular root server is it correct or wrong 
No, no. Every so, root server has all the information available. Okay. Is those files zone files are with uh, all the zone files are with them. Can see. Right. Right. But which zone files? Top level. Only. Top level domains. Not okay. the zone files of your let us say fi.com. Not not those zone files. Okay. Only dot okay. com zone file. Okay. Means it could be possible if it is pointing to dot net uh, root server. Means uh, that uh, so root server will be authoritative for dot net and uh, it is non authoritative for other. <laughs> Uh, let's not let's not get uh, more into that. I will be explaining in a moment for the sake. Okay. 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 Because otherwise you will get confused. Okay. Okay. That's just query. Okay. Don't worry. I will be explaining that query. Okay. So there is an organization who is handling this. What you were, what you people were saying, named as I S I C A N N. This is an organization. Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. It coordinates the operation of IANA functions. IA is your Internet Assigned Number Authority, including your administrations for the root zone file. And it keeps track that every of the zone file for your root servers only should be saved. Okay? Okay, sir. <laughs> now let's come to your question so that you can you know maybe understand more on this part in a better way let us say there is a root server and you will feel like it is a reverse tree structure this is the root the root has different different top level domain present let us say they have edu okay they have com they have net, they have org, and lot of them. Okay, I am not going to everything. So let's spread out with the net further. In the net, we are going with net minion. Okay, in the net minion also, maybe you can have some blog site, you can have maybe some subdomains for the jobs, maybe some some for the videos or a number of things. See how your DNS hierarchy happens. If you go from branches to the root, it will be block dot net minion, then dot net. And in the background, as I told you, there is a hidden dot. So if you just try to resolve from right to left it is dot server then net server then net minion server then block server now the authoritative server can be here what you were asking Visha. okay dot server don't have any information about the dns server of the net minion. dot server only aware about com only about edu only about net or only about org when this request will go to the root server it will say that okay you are you are need to go to the net it will forward to the net net will see okay you need to go to the net minion okay go to the net minion and here there is some dns server who is handling all these things and your ip will get resolved let us say 1.2.3.4 that is how your request will be gonna deserve uh, sorry uh, uh, what to say converted resolve okay okay so here the authority is that uh, you have drawn with the yellow coloring yellow that's authority and yes. the root server is just pointing out to the it particular has, dot it has all the zones related to the net root and server root. root server has all the zones with respect to the top level domain like edu com net org fa I N C A. Yeah, it's just a pointer means pre uh, redirecting to the particular true, 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 true. Okay. Venkat, clear to you? Yes, sir. 
Balakrishnan, eighty. Any doubt? No. 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 Oh, okay. So this is like a uh, very brief. I am talking about you know overview how this database files are managed in the DNS with help of your zone files and with help of your resource records. Okay. <clears throat> I will be giving you an example now, how the naming process take place. So before that, I wanted to ask about one more thing that is LDNS. Can you please explain about LDNS? Any one of you? Local cache. Local cache. Okay. Can we see that? I'm not sure, sir. But... So see. It's all right. It's not an interview. It's not an, an something like I am judging you. I just want some response. That's it. Whatever you have in your mind, you can speak. Yes, Bankit? Oh, no idea. I never heard about LDNS. Okay. LDNS name says local DNS server. It differs from scenario to scenario. Let us say if I am a user or right away, I'm in my home. From my home, if I need to go to the internet, I will go to my modem, which is provided by my ISP. And this modem is also acting as a DNS server. So in my case, the LDNS server is what? This modem. Clear? Yes, yes. If there is an enterprise user there in the enterprise, we should have some of the DNS solution. Okay. It can be any, maybe provided by some DDI, or there are a lot of DNS solutions present. For these guys, LDNS is what? Whatever solution we present. Okay. But this is not uh, authoritative, right? Just, just LDNS. Uh, I will be going to talk about that part. But let's just think about the LDNS now. Okay. So this is LDNS, local DNS. Sir. Now let me, okay, let me give you some example. Probably that will make more sense to you people. This is a person, Ram. He wanted to go to facebook.com. He has a very good time, okay, so that he can scroll to the Facebook videos and he wanted to utilize his time for checking the Facebook. He's going, maybe cache is not there, nothing is there. If cache would be there, let me tell you about the cache person. When he opened his browser and there is a cache there, naming resolution process done. Nothing required the next step. If in the operating system, let us say window, Linux, whatever, there is a cache available. Again, naming process done. Nothing is required. If these two guys does not have that, it will go to its local DNS server. And local DNS server has the cache available. At every point, there can be cache. Again, naming process done, nothing need to be go further. But let us say this is not the scenario. Okay, cache is not available. I am just excluding the cache part. Let me make it a little bit more smaller so that our picture can come on the same page. So Ram, say I wanted to go for facebook.com. This query will go to the LDNS, which in this case is his ISP modem. When this query will go to the LDNS, there is no cache. LDNS say that, okay, he wanted to go to something facebook.com and there is a hidden dot. It means this query will go where? To the, please speak up, root yes. server. And as I told you, root server never resolved. Root server will point out to the dot com. 
So next, this query will go where to top level domain that is home server. Home server will send that okay, I have an entry for the Facebook. You guys go there and check there. So it is again giving an IP address for Facebook DNS. How it has the name server available for the Facebook.com. And that name server is saying that what is the IP address of the Facebook.com servers, which servers, DNS servers. Next, your request will go to the Facebook DNS. And it has the entry. This entry will give the IP to your LDNS. LDNS will give this IP to the client. Now client have the IP address available. It can form the packet. And since you guys are from the networking, I need not to explain that it will prepare all the packets like what is my source Mac, what is my DMAC, what is my source IP, what is my DIP, what is my source port, any random port, what is my D port, probably it would be 443 because it is your HTTPS thing and blah, blah, blah. blah. Once this packet will form, the next actual application request, these, these old requests was a DNS request. Now actual DNS, actual, uh, you know, application request will go to the direct server who is handling facebook.com. So the lower part is the DNS request. The upper part is the application traffic or the application request. Is this part clear to you? Everybody. Yes. Yes. I will be explaining on this a lot more because it's again a very few components I talked here. There are a lot more components which will come into the part when we are talking about the DNS resolution process, but not in the first class. Otherwise, you people will get confused. Okay. But for the time being, you just think like this is how the naming resolution process overview is. I will be coming to this naming resolution process again tomorrow, okay? Because uh, it was not the part of today's class. But since you were a little bit confused, so I gave you an overview. Is this part clear to everybody? Yes. Venkat? Yes, yes. Okay, eighty. Yes, sir. Any doubt to anybody? No. Okay. As I told you that you will receive the videos and this lab, okay, as a part of our classes, and everybody of you need to prepare your own lab because it's not like that if Vishal is doing something, it will intervene with Venkat. No, every one of you have your different board. So if you are doing the work, it's your work only. Nobody else can intervene in that. Okay. How to access that lab? How to access the videos? That Zoya will, uh, you know, uh, tell you. Probably you will be receiving the emails, all the uh, procedures, how to do these things. Okay. That NetMinion will take care. But for the technical part, I am here to help you. Today, I am just wrapping it up a little bit earlier, 10, 15 minutes. Okay. But if you have any doubt, you please speak up. So this general uh, query regarding the uh, DNS. So, so do, for, D, for DNS uh, configuration, so do we need to be familiar with all these uh, jargon, uh, like yeah, A records, C name, zones, everything? Uh, See, when you will create these things, you will say that uh, it, it is really very easy. Why you are asking this question? Probably you have not seen those things yet. Okay. But once you create it, maybe it's like when you learn about CCNA, the mm -hmm. IP addressing is a very horrible topic in those days, right? The IP addressing and the subnetting. But nowadays, you are aware that how to do the IP addressing, even IPv6 also you people can. Yeah, just, just wanted to check because. Uh... Right. So you, you need to. Answer is yes. You need to do. Okay. okay. We cannot escape with that. But yeah. 
these are very very basic things once you understand about the same you will find that okay yeah i am very comfortable with it okay so yeah if you prepared uh, it is yeah, it is not that difficult but just trying to understand the scope of this subject right so, right you you need to do you need to do okay. we need to do a lot of labs believe me lot of labs okay. because labs is something we can understand the all that stuff right even we will capture the traffic for using the wire shark okay i will show you how the dns query is moving in okay. our in our lab topology okay so you would be able to make your concepts very robust by that okay. and regarding gslb so yes is it is it linked to dns and gslb or gslb topic is different gslb is something which is a core stuff why fi gtm is you know getting placed in the organizations okay you will take some time to understand that believe me because as an overview you can understand but when it actual come to the implementation okay multiple of like on the basis of my previous batches okay. i can say that multiple of people get confused again okay but don't worry i will try to give you step by step introduction so that you will not you know uh, like stuck somewhere in the gslb also but gslb no doubt very easy and very powerful feature from the okay. figtm okay so yeah final question so so what is the duration of this course like uh, is it, is it how many weekends or any it's approximately you can say one month or one and a half month okay with respect to the saturday and sunday towards each day okay. so four hours a weekend you can say approximately you can say 18 hours minimum to the 20 22 bit like that depending upon you know batch to batch also so six six weekends approximately approximately you can see five to six weekends yes five to six weeks okay yeah just just trying because to plan yeah. my other things yeah no no these are the valid questions okay so one more one question sir Mm -hmm. is there any good resources available to uh, his terms a record i will be, uh, I, will be i will be giving you the books later don't worry okay different different resources i would be giving you uh, okay even those are the free resource over the internet but maybe you would not be able to find out the uh, you know good resource or maybe you are not aware currently like what to use what not to use i will be going to give you those resources once you have all the fundamentals clear from this uh, course okay okay so don't uh, worry about the resources things you will be having very enough resources available okay okay 80 balkrishan any doubt from you people no sir okay so uh, i can see a message from zoya that she is asking your number if you are interested for the classes okay at and balkishan to you uh, you can just share your numbers to her so that she can take further on this okay okay sir thank you